God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Sing praise to God who reigns above, the God of all creation. The God of power, the God of love, the God of our salvation. With healing balm my soul he fills, and every faithless murmur stills. To God all praise and glory. How good is the God of Israel to the pure of heart. How good God is to Israel, to those who are pure of heart. Yet my feet came close to stumbling. My steps had almost slipped, for I was filled with envy of the proud when I saw how the wicked prosper. For them there are no pains. Their bodies are sound and sleek. They have no share in men's sorrows. They are not stricken like others. So they wear their pride like a necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. Their hearts overflow with malice. Their minds seethe with plots. They scoff. They speak with malice. From on high they plan oppression. They have set their mouths in the heavens, and their tongues dictate to the earth. So the people turn to follow them, and drink in all their words. They say, How can God know? Does the Most High take any notice? Look at them, such are the wicked, but untroubled they grow in wealth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. How good is is the the God God of Israel Israel to the pure pure of heart. heart, Their laughter will turn to weeping, their merriment to grief. How useless to keep my heart pure and wash my hands in innocence when I was stricken all day long, suffered punishment day after day. Then I said, if I should speak like that, I should abandon the faith of your people. I strove to fathom this problem, too hard for my mind to understand, until I pierced the mysteries of God and understood what becomes of the wicked. How slippery the paths on which you set them. You make them slide to destruction. How suddenly they come to their ruin, wiped out, destroyed by terrors. Like a dream one wakes from, O Lord, When you wake, you dismiss them as phantoms. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Their laughter will Will turn turn to to weeping, weeping, their their merriment to grief. grief. Those who depart from you will perish. My joy is to remain with you, my God. And so, when my heart grew embittered, and when I was cut to the quick, I was stupid and did not understand, no better than a beast in your sight. Yet I was always in your presence. You were holding me by my right hand. You will guide me by your counsel, and so you will lead me to glory. What else have I in heaven but you? Apart from you, I want nothing on earth. My body and my heart faint for joy. God is my possession forever. All those who abandon you shall perish. You will destroy all those who are faithless. To be near God is my happiness. I have made the Lord God my refuge. I will tell of all your works at the gates of the city of Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. 
Amen. Those who depart from you will perish. My joy is to remain with you, my God. To savor your words is my delight, O Lord. Honey itself is not sweeter. From the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. Confident as I am about this, I wanted to visit you first, so that a double grace might be yours. I planned to visit you, both on my way to Macedonia and on my return, that I might receive your help on my journey to Judea. Do you suppose that in making those plans I was acting insincerely, or that my plans are so determined by self-interest that I change my mind from one minute to the next? As God keeps his word, I declare that my word to you is not yes one minute and no the next. Jesus Christ, whom Silvanus, Timothy, and I preached to you as Son of God, was not alternately yes and no. He was never anything but yes. Whatever promises God has made have been fulfilled in him. Therefore it is through him that we address our amen to God when we worship together. God is the one who firmly establishes us along with you in Christ. It is he who anointed us and has sealed us, thereby depositing the first payment, the Spirit, in our hearts. I call on God as my witness that it was out of consideration for you that I did not come to Corinth again. Domineering over your faith is not my purpose. I prefer to work with you toward your happiness. As regards faith, you are standing firm. I did decide, however, not to visit you again in painful circumstances. For if I cause you pain, who can make me happy again but the ones I grieved? I wrote as I did so that when I come, I may not be saddened by those who should rejoice my heart. I know you all well enough to be convinced that my happiness is yours. That is why I wrote you in great sorrow and anguish, with copious tears, not to make you sad, but to help you realize the great love I bear you. If anyone has given offense, he has hurt not only me, but in some measure, to say no more, every one of you. The punishment already inflicted by the majority on such a one is enough. You should now relent and support him, so that he may not be crushed by too great a weight of sorrow. I therefore beg you to reaffirm your love for him. The reason I wrote you was to test you and learn whether you are obedient in all matters. If you forgive a man anything, so do I. Any forgiving I have done has been for your sakes and before Christ to prevent Satan, whose guile we know too well, from outwitting us. God firmly establishes us in Christ. He anointed and sealed us. And as his pledge to us, he sent his spirit to dwell in our hearts. The Lord our God made a covenant with us and spoke to us face to face. And as his pledge to us, he sent his spirit to dwell in our hearts. From a letter to the Magnesians by St. Ignatius of Antioch, Bishop and Martyr. In the persons I mentioned, I saw and loved in faith your whole community. And so I urge you to strive to do all things in the harmony of God. The bishop is to preside as God's representative. The presbyters are to perform the rule of the apostolic council. And the deacons, who are so dear to me, are to be entrusted with the service of Jesus Christ, who was with the Father before time began and has now, at last, manifested himself to us. Follow the ways of God and have respect for one another. Let no one judge his neighbor as the world does, but love one another always in Jesus Christ. Let there be nothing among you that could divide you, but live in accord with the bishop and those who are over you 
as a sign and a pattern of eternal life. The Lord did nothing either of himself or through his apostles without his Father, with whom he is united. So, too, you should undertake nothing without the bishop and the presbyters. Do not attempt to persuade yourselves that what you do on your own account is right and proper. But when you meet together, there must be one petition, one prayer, one mind, one hope in love and holy joy, for Jesus Christ is one and perfect before all else. You must all be quick to come together as to one temple of God, one altar to the one Jesus Christ, who came forth from the one Father while still remaining one with him and returned to him. Do not be led astray by false doctrines or by old and idle tales. For if we still live by the law, we admit that we have not received grace. But the holy prophets lived according to Jesus Christ, and that is why they were persecuted. They were inspired by his grace to bring full conviction to an unbelieving world that there is one God, manifested now through Jesus Christ his Son, his Word, who came forth from the Father and was in all things pleasing to the one who sent him. Those who lived by the ancient customs attained a fresh hope. They no longer observed Saturday, but Sunday, the Lord's Day. For on that day life arose for us through Christ and through his death. Some deny this mystery, but through it we have received our faith, and because of it we persevere, that we may prove to be disciples of our only teacher, Jesus Christ. Even the prophets awaited him as their teacher, since they were his disciples in spirit. That is why Christ, whom they rightly awaited, raised them from the dead when he appeared. How then can we live without him? You should all be of one mind, caring for one another, kind, compassionate, and humble. This you have been called to do, so that you may obtain a blessing as your inheritance. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing respect and serve the Lord. This you have been called to do, so that you may obtain a blessing as your inheritance. Let us pray. Lord, be merciful to your people. Fill us with your gifts and make us always eager to serve you in faith, hope, and love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.